All right, pack number two of the replacement of the curtains, bigger part of the Zorky CLA, Zorky 6 CLA uh, walkthrough. I'll get straight to the point. Um, first thing would be to clean everything that's related to the shutter, so base plate, rollers, um, restricting gear and so on. And part of this um, cleaning process or preparation process, oh look, it's a serial number here, C651, so the serial number on the bottom plate differs from the serial number of the camera, um, but I digress. So the, uh, one of the, um, the elements of, of this procedure would be to polish certain parts. Now um, I'm starting with this just so I don't forget. One of these points of interest or um, things that you need to, I mean you don't need to, but it's probably uh, advised, um, best advice to do, would be this one. So this center hole is the hole where this that's been sitting in a nail polish remover see this is the old glue and it will be in the soup for a little longer anyhow so this part of the shaft goes in here and um, actually it goes from the top and on the bottom it has that round um, little cam that touches the contacts for the flesh. Now it will spin here and it's spin it spins quite freely because there's a certain um, degree of wobbleness or, or a degree of play between the two the two parts. Nevertheless, I would prefer to polish this part of the shaft and that um, hole, so the walls of the hole. And to do that, I will use my Dremel tool, and I will use one Q-tip broken in half. This one has already been used, that's why it has this shape. Um, and I will also use some polishing compound. If I find it... Here it is. So it's a metal polish, it's called Autosol. Um, I think it's made in Europe, yeah, in Germany, and it's used for polishing like exhaust pipes on motorcycles and so on. You don't need a lot just to uh, get some of this paste inside. And it will it will make a mess. So I usually start um, the rotation or the or the spinning motion of the Dremel tool not here, where it can splatter all around, but on a side. All right, and once that paste has been. Um, distributed on the surfaces of the wall, I can I can just move it up and down a couple of times and now I don't know if you'll see it on the camera but it has a very shiny look. So the metal inside has a very shiny look. I will clean it with, with some lighter fluid and then 
I can inspect it and see if it's enough or not. Uh, looks pretty good. There are still some rough surfaces, but I feel that the hole is, doesn't have parallel walls. It's like the actual middle, so somewhere around here, in the middle of the thickness, um, the diameter is slightly smaller, so that, that part is a lot more shiny than the rest. that should do. Now obviously you don't really want to actually enlarge this hole. It, it has enough play as it is. And that's why I like to use these cotton um, q-tips because they are very soft and it's very unlikely they will do any kind of damage to the metal. And uh, polishing paste just as um, just as well, it's only for polishing, so it shouldn't really enlarge the hole. Alright, so um, this, if I remember correctly, is the only, the only hole that needs to be polished out of all of these. I will also have to polish this, and for this shaft you have one area of interest here. Now you have one hole here, right? That hole is the one for the lower uh, roller. So you will need to polish the area that's beneath that hole because somewhere here it will come in contact with the bottom plate. You'll also need to polish the area here and here because these two zones are um, the zones of the shaft where the big drum uh, comes in contact with the shaft, so that's where the friction um, happens. The drum is made of aluminium, which is not a very slippery metal. This one, I think it's steel painted or not painted, but chemically darkened or something like that. I don't think this is paint. And you will also have another area somewhere here, so between this part or the upper hole and the middle hole. Now, normally this one slides off. I couldn't, I couldn't take this one out. The only, uh, I wouldn't advise uh, anyone tr trying to actually pull it out because since this part is the only part that connects the center to the outer ring. Pulling on on the whole um, thing means that you will deform it. And it happened to me, so I've learned my lesson. If it happens, you can slightly push it back and rotate the shaft until it looks like it's spinning centered. So. If it's wobbling, it means it's still deformed. What I usually do, I get um, something like this. It doesn't. Um, it, it can also be a, a pair of pliers, I suppose. Grab it so that the edges push against either this part or this part, and push it down. like this and it usually pops right off this one it's not budging at all so I'm not going to insist very much because I, I don't want to create any more problems then um, <clears throat> for the roller 
part of the rollers. Let me. I've got too much stuff going on here. Okay, so this is a roller. Okay, the the, the spring loaded roller. This is the top cap. The roller itself, I mean the shaft of the roller is fixed by the adjustment nut and the locking nut on the bottom. So this one is fixed and the casing, so this one spins um, around the shaft, right? So this little cap along with the entire casing will spin. Since it spins, it will um, rub against the shaft. So what I like to do is polish somewhere in here uh, around this area. You'll see, you, you'll usually see some um, shinier marks on the shaft. So that's pretty much the mark left by the cap. So you have one area here, another area here. Um, this is the, sh the shaft of the roller of the first curtain. So the first curtain has a smaller casing and it also has these two. So this one and another one that goes here. And this these also spin when the ribbons um, of the second curtain, the, the ribbons are, are um, fed over these rollers, so they will spin them. Okay, so this area, this area, this area, the inside of the caps, um, and this part, and what else? And you'll also have this little guy. So this one needs to spin here. Obviously this one is not spinning at all, freely, I mean. So you will need to polish this surface and ideally the inside of, of this little gear, but that's something I never managed to do because the diameter of the hole is very, very small. All right, and that's about it. These are the only pieces in uh, motion. I mean, that, that are part of the shutter. So the pieces that are moving with the speed of the shutter. Oh, and you have not this guy, but this guy, it has an inner hole that would benefit from some polishing because this one spins here. All right. And this part, so the inside of this hole together with the outside, the smaller diameter part of this gear that pretty much goes through here and it will, come on, it goes like here, like this and it will spin um, with the second curtain. So. These are also good candidates for some polishing. Okay. And for the polishing part of the bigger surfaces, I use a brush like this. It's, I think it's a nylon brush. It could be, I don't know, even natural hair brush, it could be something like this, a felt wheel, and of course the polishing paste. Alright, that's about 
it uh, on, on this uh, matter of polishing stuff. I won't go into further details because there are none. Um, this is the bath, a nice soup of nail polish remover. It's acetone free because I think those based on acetone are not uh, legal anymore. And I will leave them here to soak for a bit more and then I will clean everything, all the nasty old glue, um, lubricant and whatever other remains might might be on, on the parts. Uh, oh, and one more thing. You probably remember I had uh, a problem with this. So I decided to use these little guys that I also used for removing the, um, the cap on the advance lever. I had to enlarge the inside uh, diameter of one of the two parts and now I can use it like this. So I have access to the outside little bezel, okay, and to the inside um, adjustment part. So this is the, the adjustment part and it was super tight and super stuck because I think there are some traces of shellac or something like that and a lot of gunk. This can be further um, disassembled, meaning you could use one of these Q-tips to actually push um, the lens itself out. Yeah, like this. Because the lens has a cutout here, so it has a horizontal cutout and a vertical cutout. And the two parts act like a little spring, so it's pra practically friction uh, driven or friction friction fit. And now you can clean them all and get them back together. And I will uh, get them inside my little box. And now I can move along and clean everything else. And I will see you in the second part of this video when I will be measuring and cutting curtain material. I will be showing you how to open these metal bars as cleanly as possible and we'll start uh, reattaching or re-gluing the new curtains and ribbons. All right, so we have these guys ready, um, the rollers and the shafts, the springs, everything has been polished and cleaned. I don't know if it was very visible in, in the last part of the video, the way these shafts looked, they were very dull, dull looking, and now they are shiny. Whether that matters or not, I have honestly no idea. I don't even know how to make a real comparison because I would need two totally identical uh, bodies, identical in condition, and um, polish one and leave the other one unpolished and then compare the results. There are so many variables, you can't really make a correct comparison. But since it's not that much of a work to actually get them in this state, I have made a habit of always doing it. All right, before getting to the actual curtain replacement, which involves 
measuring and cutting new curtains. Um, usually it would mean measuring and cutting new ribbons. In this case, I think I will stick to the original ribbons because they are in a very, very good condition. These are the remnants of the old um, adhesive that I will try to somehow clean. I'll see if I can do that. I'll probably try some nail polish remover, maybe. I think that should work. Um, but yeah, they are in good condition. There are no signs of wear, no tears, no nothing. So I just keep them, it's easier. The only part that is a bit difficult is to actually open these metal bars to replace the curtains without touching the ribbons at all. But it's doable, I've done it before, It's um, it just takes a bit more um, care and attention. All right, so, um, that's one step, then we'll have to re-glue the new ones in such a way that everything is straight. Um, and the most important thing would be to have the metal bar. So let's say this is a curtain. It's not, but let's assume. And the most important thing is to get the edge of the metal bar totally parallel to the axis of the shaft or um, the roller. And it's even more important to get it straight on the second curtain because once the second curtain has been glued to, to the big drum, uh, changing the position <coughs> in, implies ungluing it and re-gluing it, so it's a lot of hassle. If, on the other hand, you end up having, let's say, the second curtain totally parallel to the shaft, but the first curtain at a slight angle. So let's assume, instead of being totally parallel uh, to one another, one is slightly cant canted. And let's say the slightly canted one is the first one. Well, that can be fixed if that cant is small. And you can fix it by shimming the ribbons. And what that means is that the ribbons are attached to these two rollers. And let's say, um, maybe I'll have the chance to actually demonstrate it. Hopefully not, because ideally you get a perfect job, ideally. Um, but let's say, this is slightly canted like this, so the upper part is further away from the drum than the lower part. Now, uh, in order to move it like this, you would need to add a bit of material right here, so between the roller and the ribbon, that would actually increase the diameter of the roller and that means the roller will take up more ribbon and will pull more from this side than from this side and as a result it will straighten up. You can only compensate so much um, and by that I mean very very small um, mistakes. Anything above that point will lead to the curtain material uh, making a, I don't know how it's called. So instead of being totally flat, it will bend. It will bend a bit in um, the opposite side from the shimming side. So if you shimmed the upper uh, ribbon, it will bend on the lower, on the lower side of the curtain. Okay. Um, I wanted to say something else, but I think I forgot. Yeah, well, it, it probably doesn't matter. 
Okay. Ah, uh, I, yeah, I remembered. Um, the problem is that when you are shimming, or one problem, when you are shimming one of the ribbons, you are not actually increasing the diameter all over, all over the, the roller. You only increase it in one point. And that means the increase uh, take up of the ribbon will not be linear. And that means that maybe this is the edge of the curtain. Maybe it will start moving, let, let's say it's canted like this. It will start moving canted and at some point it will straighten up. Um, and it depends, I don't really know on what, but it can start move a bit and then straighten up. It can straighten up right away and then shift the cant from one um, side of the vertical to the other. And that's another issue. So ideally you get it straight from the very beginning. In theory, sticking the ribbons and the curtains uh, totally parallel to the axis or the shafts should be enough. In practice, unfortunately, it's not enough because if during the manufacturing process something didn't go according to plan, if um, this bottom plate is ever so slightly um, bolted to the left or to the right of the correct position, that means these will no longer be parallel, uh, perpendicular to the bottom plate. So if the bottom plate is bolted to the right of the camera, it will pull like this and the shafts will not be vertical. They will be slightly uh, angulated. And you can't really control it. You can't even see it. It's a matter of, I don't know, Uh, microns probably, certainly a lot under one millimeter. Um, and that means that you risk to glue everything correctly and end up with canted curtains. It happened to me. Um, I took the shutter apart again. I re-measured everything. Everything was straight and yet the two curtains were not parallel. All right. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is, um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about before getting um, ahead with the curtains was the actual logic behind trying to find the correct attachment point before when I thought I did that big mistake, which I actually did but managed to uh, hopefully fix it. So this is the assembly of main shaft rollers and big drum and the big drum is obviously not machined correctly because it has a wobble in it so one of the holes is not centered and that squeaky sound is the sign of lack of lubrication. It's running dry right now. Still, it's running nicely because I have polished everything and everything is cleaned. It will run even nicer after I will oil the um, turning points, or, or the, um, the rotational points. Um, but I'm only doing this lubrication part just before putting everything back together because I don't want to contaminate the surfaces that I will be gluing things on. Um, yeah. So, bottom plate, this is the restrictor gear, or restricting gear. I have also cleaned, um, um, polished and lubricated. By lubrication on this gear, I mean one very, very, very small dab of shutter oil. Nye oil, highly recommended. Uh, not by me. I mean, what do I know? But by any... Um, good and experienced um, 
camera repurposing, all right? And I smudge that, that little dab of oil on the inner side of the whole of this gear. So practically the surface that rubs against the screw. And it's all nice and dandy. I think the Russians used um, grease instead of oil, but this gear will turn at the speed of the shutter. So it has to run very smoothly and very easily. Obviously, since it's a restricting gear, it can only move from here to here. And it restricts the movement of the, the big um, drum and um, shaft and rollers assembly. So this can move from here to here. Now, of course, you would have to know the correct position for which this movement happens. You could possibly get some um, lines or some, some marks scribed down on the bottom plate and on these pieces that would help you uh, on the reassembly part, but it's not mandatory. You can easily find the correct position. Okay, I will go through the anatomy or the logic behind the shutter design uh, again, I again meaning that I already did it in a video on the Zoki 4. It's pretty much the same shutter. So you have one central shaft. The central shaft is um, hard connected or um, better said these two take up uh, rollers are bolted to the central shaft also, this little gear or piece is bolted to the central shaft on this hole. And this is the, the shutter speed selector. So pretty much the shutter speed selector determines the moment when the second curtain will be released. This will always go... Um, I'm, going, I'm going to say full turn, one way and the other way. By full turn, I don't mean 360 degrees, but I mean from one end to the other end of the motion uh, allowed by this gear. So it will move from here to here. It will move counterclockwise, full motion for winding, and it will move clockwise, full motion for uh, releasing or shutter motion. When you release the shutter, this is the motion that it will have. All right. The upper roller has that um, little bridge that connects the center, the center piece to the outer, the actual roller. The drum has two slots in it. Now, it can have two slots, it can have a hole, it can have two holes various designs um, across various Soviet models, whether it's a Fed, a Zorki, a Zenit, um, a Fed 1, a Zorki 1, a Zorki 4, a Zorki 6, whatever it is. The idea is that this piece, this gear, that sits on the shaft but moves freely, will engage in one of those two slots. Um, it doesn't matter in which one because the slot that this gear will engage in will actually be determined by the pos uh, insertion point or the attachment point of the second curtain. It doesn't make sense now, it will make sense when I will uh, reattach everything and in fewer words I can um, safely say that I never uh, bothered with which slot this piece goes in. It always went into the right slot. Alright, and obviously since it's symmetrical it doesn't matter. 
What does matter is the fact that on some cameras, this one is not one of those, but in the last Zorky 6 that I worked on, the slot that this gear was engaging in had a very large deformation. So like somebody at some point really forced the camera and this pin, which is probably steel or something, deformed or almost cut a groove inside this um, drum that's made of aluminium. And I decided to switch it around, so to make it engage into the unworn slot. And that meant that I had to take the original mark and move it 180 degrees on the other side, so I could keep um, the correct attachment point of the curtain. All right, so this one goes into the slot and now the big drum can only move from one end to the other end. So this gear limits the shaft and the two rollers and thus limiting the motion of the first curtain and this little piece limits in the same manner the motion of the drum. It's what I said earlier that it's a stack of operations in a sense. When you are cocking the shutter the motion will be counterclockwise and it will be uh, achieved via this gear that will be moved or ro rotated by this gear which in turn is rotated by the sprocket or the sprocket shaft which in turn is rotated um, by a little um, a little gear or piece which is this one it looks very similar to the one that's attached to the self timer this one it doesn't matter right now it really doesn't matter it's very logical as we'll move forward all right so when you are cocking the shutter you are turning it counterclockwise if i hold my my uh, finger on the drum and i rotate the shutter uh, the shaft the drum moves along because i'll go back and move forward again See, you can see there, hopefully, the pin from this gear. And when I turn the shaft, the little bridge from uh, this roller stops against the pin and automatically pushes the big drum. All right, so you are the other side. You have just cocked the shutter and obviously this goes with the shutter. Just a second, like this. Now, the drum is free to move back. It won't move back because on top of this piece there is another piece this one and this little prong of the piece will be restricted where did it come from it will be restricted by the second curtain latch and that is why it's not moving out of position. So in, in essence, what happens is that 
just a second. So now the system is cocked and in essence the two rollers attached to the central shaft when you release the shutter will move back but the second curtain meaning the big drum will not until according to the setting on this uh, piece this little guy the pin on this guy which is connected to this will hit the latch move it aside and allow the drum to also move back or rotate back that's the essence of the shutter it's a very very simple design all right now Let's say I don't have the um, attachment point, I don't have the line on the drum. What I would do, I would connect the first curtain, so I have the first curtain, I know the length of the ribbons, which is extremely important, I know the attachment points of the ribbons, which is also extremely important, I know the length of the first curtain, uh, first curtain from here to here, this is less important, you have to be in, in the ballpark, but it doesn't really matter. It's in, uh, attached to this little guy. Some people I've seen marking the attachment point or the insertion line on the roller of the first curtain. I don't really understand why. This is free spinning. I mean, it's just, it's just sitting here and it will, as you increase the tension on, on the spring, it will just try to spin back. So it really does not matter where exactly you stick the curtain to as, as a position. All right, and I would reassemble, um, so I would have, let's put it even more, uh, precise into context. I would have first curtain, ribbons attached. So these two ribbons attached to the two rollers, the end of the curtain attached to this roller, and I would also have the second curtain, I know the length, I don't know where it's supposed to be attached to. I would put a strip of double side tape, stick it anywhere, it really doesn't matter. Obviously the other ends, the, the ends of the ribbons attached to this roller, everything put back into the camera. And now I would... Um, make sure that it is assembled in the correct way and that means that when the shutter is released and obviously uh, inserted back into the camera this piece has to align no it's not uh, it's not on the body shell, it's on this. So this prong of the piece has to align with these two scratch marks. So something like this. Now, if it sits like this, it means the meshing between this gear and this gear is incorrect. I would take it out. Take this off, move it a bit, I mean rotate it a bit in the correct direction, put it back, put everything back into the camera until I get these two aligned. When this piece aligns with those scratch marks, I know for sure that the position is correct. And now with a bit of tension 
doesn't really matter two full turns something on each roller doesn't matter with a bit of tension in the shutter I would first of all cock the shutter and see if the edge of the metal bar on the second curtain moves aside enough I mean does it clear the film gate or not because if it remains here it means I need to move it further so I need instead of let's say being here it should be somewhere here if this is um, if this is glued to the dam to the drum with double side tape in theory you can only, you can just unpeel it move it peel it again or unglue it move it and re-glue it you can do it a couple of times before the um, sticky part um, wears out let's say the only problem is that you'd have to do it through this opening and it's pretty much not possible on the Zorky 4 um, on the Zorky 1, Fed 1, where you just pull out the shutter from the crate, from, from the body shell, you can pretty much make this adjustment without uh, any kind of issue, because everything is accessible. On the Fed 2, on the Zorky 6, especially on the Zorky 6, you pretty much have to remove the shutter from the crate in order to make an adjustment, put it back, try again and so on. That is why it's a tedious process because it can take you, it, it could take you a good full hour just to get it where it needs to be. Um, but it's doable. And when you got it right, next you'll need to check that this is straight or not. And if it's straight and everything looks nice, let's say this is the correct attachment point, you have a strip of double side tape that only glues uh, in place the end, so maybe a centimeter from the end of the curtain. Put glue, mm, put some glue here, um, contact cement, glue it in place, wait a bit for the uh, cement to set down, then peel the area that has um, the double side tape, peel off the double side tape, add more glue, stick it here and you are done. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do anyway, to make sure the edge is straight. And um, yeah, now we can move further and start chopping some curtain material. And that will be part number three of this video, which is already long enough. And um, the actual gluing will be in the next video, most likely. All right. Um, let me organize myself a bit. I won't be needing these. Um, oh yeah. These are the end caps, and they are slightly different. See, one has a little um, extruded part, and the other is totally flush. The totally flush one corresponds to the short um, barrel. Okay, and these caps will come in contact to the flush part. The other one corresponds to the other barrel. And both ends of, of this barrel or um, shaft, it's not shaft, it's a roller, are a bit um, extruded. 
All right. Also, this goes here. So the spring is off set or off center, while the centered one goes with the small one. Okay. So I put these away. I put this away and I will take this one apart again. one apart. Right. Next, in order to open up these metal bars as cleanly as possible, you will not use a screwdriver that will leave lots of dents and marks in um, the metal bar. Instead, the best attack would be to use, um, let me see if I can find it, I don't know what I did with it, it's a scraper knife, I think it's called, used to scrape paint, and this is the end of the knife, this is how it looks like. Excuse me, here it is. So, one of these. And I also need a big... Um, I'm using a butcher's knife. You could use something else. Ideally, it would be a, a knife with a very broad uh, blade. And also, ideally, either flat or only slightly curved blade. And you'll see in a moment what I'll be doing with it. Also, let's see how the Soviets did this. Normally, since um, the order or the way the curtains sit as in rubber side to the front or to the back of the camera. Um, I don't know if there's a, a real or a true rule to this. What I've seen and what I've found logic is to get or to have um, the silk side towards the most visible part. So in case of a bottom loader, the silk side would be facing the front of the camera and the rubber to the back of the camera. In case of a regular camera like this Zorky 6 that has the uh, opening back or Zorky 4 fed to um, any fed except fed 1 that has the detachable back, obviously silk side to the back of the camera, rubber side to the lens, the front of the camera because how many times will you look inside with the lens taken off. All right, so if you look at this, this is the glue, this was the roller, so obviously rubber uh, to the front. Now this part, the second curtain, usually um, must be on top of the second cur of the first curtain. And to me, the logic says that uh, the shiniest or the least bumpy side of the metal bar, or better said, the least bumpy sides of the metal bars should face each other. Because at some point they will rub one on the other. And in this case, both are facing the same side. So both... Uh, let's call them shiny sides, are facing the front of the camera. 
while the bumpy sides are facing the back of the camera. And by bumpy side, I mean this side that has ribbon, a piece of ribbon, and these little pieces of metal that are like very small clamps to secure the actual metal bar um, in place. So I will change the orientation and I will do that uh, ah, I should do it for this but that means that let me see so both ribbons on the second curtain were 104 So in theory it doesn't really matter if it's up or down, the only thing is that one was straight and one was not. Now given the fact that I will have to re-glue this as parallel as possible to the drum, it won't really matter which is which. Okay, and that means I will um, turn this bar over. No, not this one, this one. So, this side will face the front of the camera and it will meet come on, this side of the other metal bar. So pretty much shiny, shiny, they will come in contact if uh, that is the case. All right, in order to open the bars, you will need a very fine screwdriver. This is the finest I've got because it was initially a 1.5, but I um, adjusted it to fit the rangefinder adjustment for the horizontal in the FED2. So it, the FED2 has a very small hole that you need to poke the screwdriver through. And I had to narrow this part of the shaft. Anyhow, you will need to get uh, under this little um, part of metal. And then straighten it up. Now you can probably only do that once at best before this will break. If it breaks and they usually do, what I do I just take the Dremel and round a bit um, or smoothen the area where uh, the fracture line is just in case. And you need to slowly and carefully lift this, ideally without turning apart the ribbon. Okay, that's one. Next, if I look from here, I see the metal bar does a curve. It has a curve, so it's a be it bent, but we will deal with that later. Next would be to actually open up the metal bar, and that must be done with a lot of care, as in not to sever the ribbons. So I will use this and I will stick it between um, the cutting material and the metal bar somewhere in between so somewhere in the middle and then make my way to the edge of the metal bar 
hopefully hopefully uh, opening it up just a bit and then I could try to move in from here like this if I don't care meaning that I will also replace the ribbons then that's a bit more um, easy because I can be sloppy about it and simply open it up without caring much about the ribbons because they will be trash anyway all right i'll go uh, i'll go fetch my butcher's knife so this is the butcher's knife what i will try to do is let's see so i will get the blade here from one end to the other as far as it goes unfortunately the blade is um, shorter than it, uh, it should be but that's all I have and now I will fit the butcher's knife somehow behind the blade and this might slip but once you get this so you have a bit of a space you can put this one first because it is longer And this is where the, sh the flat part is important because it's if it's too curved it will not it will not go down in this groove from one end to the other all right this should do just fine and now either with this or with another knife i usually use two knives but lately I only relied on this. You start and slowly bend the two halves of the metal bar. And now simply peels out all right now if everything went uh, according to plan you shouldn't have any kind of damage on the ribbons um, nor on the metal bar sometimes a very small you could call it a dent I suppose could happen here because the force the prying force is more towards the um, to this side of the metal bar not on on this side where it's actually bent all right and one more thing I should clean the inside I usually use um, some solvent but in this case I don't want to have it spilled over the ribbons I think I'll have to I think I will have to use some lighter fluid
just enough to soften this adhesive and hopefully Not, not enough, but a bit better. Anyhow, uh, I suppose you got the idea. That's what I need to do for both of them. I won't be boring you with the other one. And next step will be to reinstall the new curtains. Also, I will not be bo um, boring you with the actual process of cutting the new curtains uh, out of a bigger sheet of material you just need a craft knife and the correct uh, dimensions that we already have so next part will be the wriggling of of the new curtains and getting the shutter back um, back into the camera and testing the position of the curtains and um, making slight adjustments if needed. Before I, I can uh, shoot that particular video I will need to actually paint the shell. Now I took off uh, the leatherette, I took off the black paint this, I think, is the old primer. Um, it's extremely stubborn. It doesn't want to, to go away from this body shell. And I will not risk using acetone that could uh, spill on the inside and ruin the paint. So, probably, um, and most likely, I will take this to work with me and I will sandblast this part that needs to be painted black. And then I will have to paint it. And that is another um, adventure in its own. I have some animal paints used in scale modeling and I'm still trying to figure out the correct approach and the correct steps to um, getting a hard and durable finish. So yeah, it will be a couple more days before I can actually continue the series. I'll try to get as much as possible ready by then. Um, yeah, and we'll continue from there. Okay, thank you for your patience. See you next time. Oh, and uh, happy holidays if anyone of you is celebrating Easter.